Hello, 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 guys. I will get started here in a few minutes. I will, tonight, I will be going over it, um, a true story that happened to me back in 08, 09, somewhere in there, about a near-death experience that I had that um, secured my faith, so to speak, in the path that I'm in right now. So, I will go ahead and get started here in a few minutes. Just wait for people to come in. Hello, Philip. Hello, Mikhail. Tonight's topic is I will be sharing an sharing uh, about a near-death experience that I had back in 08. I will be only accepting guest requests of people that I know, basically, basically close friends. And I'll be getting started here, here, here in just a few minutes. So if you have any questions, let's just hang out, have fun. Hello, welcome in, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Tonight is a special, a special, special, special topic. I will be sharing here in the next few minutes, starting to share a topic about a near-death experience that happened to me back in 2008, 2009. Um... And today, tonight, today is the anniversary of this experience. And this experience um, kind of secured, secured my faith, secured me in my faith, so to speak. And I haven't looked back since. Hello, 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 welcome, 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 welcome. Um, for those of you who are coming in, I'm only taking guest requests of people that I know. Um, I will, I am only, I am going to be sharing a near-death experience that I had back in 08, 09. Of, uh, of something that happened to me that um, tonight is, today is the anniversary of it. And um, this secured me in my faith. So I will be getting started here in just a 
few more minutes at right around 7 o'clock Central Time. Right now it's 6.54. So until then, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I am a Latter-day Saint. I don't do apologetics. Genuine questions, please. Okay. I think I'm going to gonna go ahead and get started just a tad bit early. I want to say welcome to all who have shown up. And um, like I said, I am a Latter-day Saint. I, um, I joined the church back in December of 2001, but I, um, but I wasn't always a member. And what the experience I'm going to be sharing happened back in 2008, 2009, somewhere in there. And this was right around the time when I was having... Issues where I couldn't grasp where I was still just what what uh, what I considered to be a baby Christian, a baby follower of Christ, a baby LDS member. So I went I went before Heavenly Father. And I prayed and I asked for light and understanding on, I wanted to know why why people would walk away from Heavenly Father. I wanted to under truly understand why, because I, I really couldn't grasp it at that time. And at the time, Heavenly Father said to me very, 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 very clearly, are you sure you want to know this? And I said to him, if I didn't want to know, I wouldn't ask. He goes, okay, I warned you. And it was shortly after this that this incident happened. And it was the Monday before Thanksgiving. I want to say back in 2008. Like today. Today is the Monday before Thanksgiving. And at the time, I worked for the Mid-America Council Boy Scouts. All right, and I worked for their scout camps um, and, um, and doing maintenance. Um, and my project for that day was to do was to remodel, well, one of my projects for that day was to remodel a well vault roof. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a four foot by four foot by eight, by about eight foot pit. 
housing of pressure tank pipes, wires, electrical stuff that powers the well, the water well that gave these two camps water. And the ranger that lives on site year-round water. So, I went, I finished with the tar paper, put, um, and I went to brace myself, putting on, uh, to put, uh, I, I went to brace myself to get the shingles. Misjudging where the only access hole was. And I fell through head first. Busting right around a three inch pipe with my head. Probably about that big. And a quarter inch cast iron pressure switch and, and there's a scar right here if you look on top of my head there's a little smile like right here at first I couldn't get I was I was like this in the hole so it was a four foot by four foot pit I've, and then all of a sudden I felt somebody grab me by the arm, the left arm, and help me to my feet because I was cause I landed on a board. And then and then of course my head broke the pipe and the the pressure switch, so the pit was starting to fill with water um, at a dramatic rate. Um, but I started to shout for help because there was the ranger house right there. And, and then off in the distance, there was another house. So I figured there was people there. And my, and my boss had left early to go hunting that day. So, so I kept shouting for help, kept shouting for help, kept shouting for help. Then all of a sudden, I hear this voice. And just hear me out, guys. Just hear me out. Call 911 from your phone or you're going to die. And at first, I kind of blew the voice off. And I'm like, oh, my phone's... By this time, my phone was underwater. It was in my front pocket. Just a dinky little flip phone from Samsung. This is why I... And, and this is... From this event, this is why I always buy a Samsung phone. From this event. But, but, it's not, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, so I continue shouting for help. One of the times I almost passed out. And I never said this to anybody. And then I hear this voice again, more, a little bit more forceful this time. And, and it said, call 911 from your phone. Or you are going to die. So I did. So I. So I said, "Okay." I pulled out my phone, out of the water, out of my pocket, out of the water. Flipped it open, down nine one one. Press send. 
phone sprang to life, full battery power, full everything. It started working. And then I started telling the 911, the 911 operator what was going on, exactly where I was, and how to find me. And the 911 operator didn't believe me. And I said, ma'am, ma'am, I'm not, she said, this is not a joke. You better not be joking because this is a serious offense. And I said, ma'am, I'm not joking. I can, I can actually feel inside my head right now. If you don't get here soon, you'll be telling my wife, my kids, why, why, why you had to fish out a dead body. And then she said, well, you got that wrong 911 center. So I'm going to transfer you to the right 911 center. So I had to go through it again. And they still didn't believe me, but they, they, they believed me after, 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 after about three minutes of talking to them. When nine one, when when rescuers got there, they pulled me out right away. Took me to the hospital. My boss had already met me there because he was on the fire and rescue squad. He heard the call, so he just decided to meet me there. Cause he had he he was gonna have to fill out paperwork. Cause he said, "You, you know, you, you know, you could have died today." I go, "Yeah, hypothermia should have killed me." And yeah. Yeah, because my core body temperature dropped down to like 85 that day. The blow alone to the pipe, pipe should have killed me. But this is the thing that blew my mind at the time. When rescuers got there, and I'll turn the camera so you guys can see it. Live electrical stuff was right here on, on my left, right by my left shoulder. The water was right here. Okay. I was about 30 seconds away of being electrocuted with about 50,000 volts. He goes, somebody's watching over you. I go, yeah, Heavenly Father is watching over me. See, guys, now I got a question for you. I had a major head trauma. How long, and I want you to put it in the chat down, down below. How long do you think I was out of work? Go ahead and put it in, put it, put it in the chat. What it, what, to the one person that's in here. How long do you think I was out of work? And go ahead and share this live, please. 
go ahead and share this live. I want to go ahead and get this out. I was only out of work for a week. Hello to all that is coming in. I will re-go over this story. If anybody, if any one of my friends that are that is in here, if they want to come up, come on up. If they have any questions, go ahead. If you want me to start over because you came in late, because I actually started about five minutes early. See, folks, I learned that day that God is real. He knows each and every one of his children very, very personally. And he is, is not going to directly interfere into your life without you reaching out first. He's not. See that day? See, I heard that voice again. While I was going through the test all the testing in the hospital. I heard that voice again. And he said, my child, I'm, I've extended your time by just a little bit. And by you sharing the story, a lot of people are going to come unto me folks God is real Jesus Christ is real he cares and loves each and every one of you he knows what you're going through, what you've been through. He don't care what, what you've done. All he cares about it is, is if you're willing to follow him right now. And if you're willing to turn over all the good, bad, and, and ugly, especially the bad and the ugly, over to him. So he can set things right in your life. Now... Can he make it so that it never happened? No. Because you're always going to have those scars. But he can make it so that what you've learned from those experiences can make you stronger so that what you've learned from those experiences you can go out and help others 
who have gone through very similar experiences or the same experiences. I said at the beginning that at the beginning of this life that when this whole thing started, I couldn't grasp why people walked away from God. I know now. It's not because of God or what he did or or or, or what people think that he's done. No. It's because of what we've done, you and me. And and, and this even says it in the scriptures. Folks, we need as a people, as a human family, to stop fighting amongst each other, to come together as a human family and help each other out and live together in peace and harmony as God intended, as what it's laid out in the scriptures unequivocally and unarguably. I don't care what denomination you are from. It says that. perfect example for those of you who claim to be followers of Christ perfect example John chapter 13 verses 34 and 35 happen to be my all time favorite verses of scripture that is in the Bible no doubt oh but anyway and it says, love one another as I have loved you. And, and this is Jesus talking here. Love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. We, folks, have to stop going around and acting all high and mighty. We're just like everybody else. Plain and simple. We are like everybody else. Member, non-member, follower, non-follower, however you want to see it. We are all children of a loving Heavenly Father that has sent us here to learn certain things. And, and it is our job to lift each other up, help help each other along the way, along the path that leads back to Heavenly Father. And that path just so happens to be the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The path of life. And the rules of that life are laid out in the scriptures, are the scriptures. And when people walk away from God, from the gospel, from the church, however however you want to look at it, that's a failure on our part, not God's part. And someday soon, when and when this is all said and done, when God said that, says that's it and rolls up the scrolls of 
the scrolls of earth and and calls everybody home and judges all all of us. He's going to set everything right. Absolutely everything. All the wrongs are going to be made right. Everybody that has ever done anything wrong, he's going to place them where they should be. And everybody that has done their best, hence I'm saying done their best to be good, done their best to be faithful, and then left the rest up to God and left the rest up to their faith in Jesus Christ, they're going to get to go on to heaven. But I don't want to go that far. I'm getting too fire and brimstone and preachy. And that's not the point of this life. Hello, Zeus is back. Welcome. This experience that I had, this near-death experience that I had, not only confirmed to me that God is real, not only confirmed to me that everything that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is true, But it also confirmed to me that God had, does have a plan. Not only a grand plan for all of his human family, but a plan for, his ch for each of his children. And since then, the reason why I, I've come to know why people walk away from God, walk away from the church, is because since 08, 09, I've had life-crushing trial after life-crushing trial after life-crushing trial after life-crushing trial. I've had contention chase me. Satan chased me around everywhere I went. I, die. I have not had any sort of peace whatsoever unless I was in the temple. And I recently went to my bishop in tears. Because I'll be honest, I've recently let my temple go for the longest, uh, temple recommend go for the longest time. And I said to my bishop, I have to go back in tears. Folks. For those of you who are here who haven't heard the whole thing with a show of likes, who wants me to go over it again? Okay. Hey. 
back in 08 and 09, I worked for the Mid-America Council, the Boy Scouts, at, at their scout ranches in, in, um, in Nebraska. If you know where that's at, you know exactly where I'm at here in the Midwest or where where I was at at the time. But anyway, but it was also right around that time where I prayed a very specific prayer wanting to know something. And that was, is wanting to know why people walked away from Heavenly Father. Because at that time, I could not grasp it whatsoever. I couldn't grasp it because I was still on that new member high. I was still going to the temple fairly regularly. I was still on that spiritual high that people get when they're fairly new members. And, and yeah, but anyway, what, at, almost as soon as I said this prayer, Folks, what uh, I, how should I say this? Heavenly Father told me, are you sure you want to know this? Are you sure? And I said, if I didn't want to know, I wouldn't ask. So, What I did, he said, okay, I warned you. And over and since then my life has been nothing but trial. Life crushing life crushing trial after life crushing trial. Plain and simple. But anyway, that's not the point of this life. But anyway, my that day, which was the Monday before Thanksgiving. Today, today's the anniversary of this event. It was about 40 degrees that day. <sighs> Today, it was about 30 degrees here and windy. Um, and one of my jobs that day was to remodel a well vault roof. And for those of you who don't know what that is, is a four foot by four foot by about eight foot pit that houses uh, a pressure tank, pipes, valves, electrical wires, electrical boxes, stuff that powers these two camps and the ranger house that gives water to these places. I had finished with the tar paper, covering the only access hole. Okay. And I went to go get, I braced myself to get the shingles, to put on the shingles. And I fell through head first. When I hit, when I hit, I hit a board when I landed. And I was like this in the hole. And all that was sticking out was my feet. And all of a sudden, I just I just stayed there for a second. All of a sudden, I felt somebody grab me by the arm, right under my armpit, and help me up, help me to my feet. That day, my boss left early to go hunting. So, so, so after it ha happened, I started shouting for help because there was uh, the ranger house there. I figured that he had somebody there. Um, and, th and then there was another house not too far away. So I started shouting for help. Figure somebody come in, come over and help me. No, nobody... Nobody heard. Nobody came to help. 
Then all of a sudden I heard this peaceful, quiet voice that just said, call 911 from your phone or you're going to die. And I'll be honest, I blew it off. Because at this point, my phone was underwater. It was in my front pocket. I had a little flip phone at that time. It, and, and it was because of this event that I will forever buy, buy, buy Samsung phones. But anyway. But I blew it off. I go, my phone's underwater. It's dead. And it, it, it's not... It's not going to work. I continued to yell. I continued to yell. I continued to yell. At one point, I yelled so much that... At one point, I yelled so much that... I almost passed out. So... Then I heard this voice again. But this time, this voice was a little, little bit more forceful. He said, call 911 from your phone or you're dead. Plain and simple. So I pulled my phone out, flipped it open, dialed 911, pressed send. Operator picked phone sprang to life, full battery power, full everything. Operator picked up, went through the whole spiel, told told her what was going on, talked to her like I'm talking to you guys now. And she didn't believe me. She actually told me this better. This better not be a joke, because if it's, because if it's a joke, you're gonna go to jail for wasting our time. And I said, no, it's not a joke, ma'am. I can actually feel inside my head right now, and if you don't get here quick, you're gonna be telling my wife, wife and kids, why, why you had to fish out a dead body. She, and she said, well, we'll calm down. Well, you actually got the wrong 911 center. Let me transfer you to the right 911 center for where you're at. So I had to go through this whole spiel again. This time it didn't take so long. This time it probably, probably took about 5-10 minutes before... Rescuers got there. But anyway. When I got to the hospital. My boss had, had already. Had already met me there. Because he was on the fire. The local fire and rescue squad. And he heard the call go out. So he would. He just went straight to the hospital. And he said, you know you could have died today? I said, yeah. Hypothermia should have killed me. Blow alone, the blow alone to the pipe should have killed me. Oh. Oh, yeah. I forgot one part. I busted a th a, 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 right around a three to four inch pipe with my head. And a quarter inch pressure switch. If you look right here, yeah. Quarter inch pressure switch right here. And, and the pressure switch was about cast iron or pressure switch um, with my head. Um, 
and he told me what my body temperature was when they brought me in. He goes, and my body temperature was, uh, my core body temperature was uh, 85, 85 degrees. I'm circling the drain. And this part, blew, and this next part blew my mind. When rescuers got there, the live electrical box was right at my left shoulder. The water was right, be right below my left, for lack of a better term, my left tit. But anyway, I was about 30 seconds away from being electrocuted. goes somebody up above was looking for you come come to find out probably about three weeks later after this all happened that 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 the stake president my bishop and there was a lot of people praying and fasting for me that day a lot of people But anyway, I got a question for the two people, for those of you, for, for the person that's already heard this story. I got a question. How long, I had a major head trauma. How long do you think I was out of work? You can go ahead and put it in the chat. I'll tell you if you're right. To be honest, I still don't remember much from. Zeus, you are very, very close. I was out of work. For, I was out of work a week and then I was back to work. Light duty, but I was back to work in a week. Seven days. Folks, guys, yeah, it is. It is from this event alone that I cannot and will not question God's existence and what this church teaches ever. God, I've seen too much. I've experienced too much. God is real. God is so real. What this church teaches from, from agency, from the very basics to the deepest doctrine. It is all true. But but the biggest thing but the biggest thing is that Jesus is the head of the church. Jesus is the key. Jesus is Lord. Hello Josh. How are you? Do you want to hear my my near death experience now too? And I tr <laughs> Sure, I'll share it again. And I actually tried when there was the end sign. I tried to submit this, and I actually got denied by 
by the church. But anyway, back in 0809, I prayed a very specific prayer. Um, I was still fairly new to the church. Um, Zeus, I have been a member since 2001. My anniversary of my baptismal date is coming up on December 1st. Anyway, if you guys want to come up, go ahead. I, um, I, like I said in my video today, I will only accept people, uh, I guess across from people that I know. And I know you guys. Um, but anyway, back in 08 and 09, I uh, prayed a very specific prayer, a very specific prayer, because I wanted to know why people walked away from Heavenly Father, because I couldn't grasp it, because I was still on that spiritual high, because I still went to the temple weekly, like three times a week. I read scriptures a lot, a lot more than what I do now. Um, I was still on a very much of a spiritual high. And um, Heavenly Father said, are you sure you want to know this? Very, very clearly to me. And I said to him, I wouldn't ask if I didn't want to know. He goes, okay. I warned you. And since then, my life has been nothing but life-crushing trial after life-crushing trial after life-crushing trial. My life hasn't been easy by no means, but, it, but since 2008, 2009, starting with this event that I'm about to share with you, Josh, It not only cemented my faith in Heavenly Father, but it, it cemented my testimony of this church and of, of the restored gospel of, of Jesus Christ. But anyway, back in 08 and 09, I was working for the Mid-America Council at two of their scout ranches. They were they were pretty much side by side. I was doing maintenance for them. And one of my jobs for the day was to remodel a well vault roof. And if you don't know what that is, yeah, it is. And I can tell you some stories. And if you don't know what a well vault roof is, is a four foot by four foot by about eight foot pit. The house is a pressure tank, pipes and all that fun stuff that gives water to these two camps and the ranger house. But anyway, I had finished with the tar paper, giving uh, um, any, and I went to brace myself to put, on, to put on the shingles. Hello, Billy Goat. And I went to brace myself to put on the shingles, misjudging where the access hole down into this pit was. Yeah, glad I could clear that up for you. And I, and, and, and I, and when I went to brace myself 
to get the shingles, I fell through head first. And on the way down into this hole, into this pit, I busted a three, three to four inch pipe, about probably right around that big. And if you look, and, and a cast iron pressure switch, and the scars right around in here, somewhere like right there. And if you ever look, see me in real life, I have a scar, scar on the top of my head, too, where. Where, where the pipe hit. But anyway. Right after. Um, because there was a board. Covering more pipes. Um, when I landed. I landed like this. Where my feet were sticking out a hole. And I felt. Somebody. Uh, and I was the. I was the only person around. My boss had left early that day. This was an OSHA nightmare. Okay. And I, but right at, right almost as soon as I, I landed, I felt somebody grab me under my arm and lift me to my feet almost immediately. And then there was, the well, and then the ranger house. And I, and I heard, yeah, it gets better there, but there, buddy. Just listen. Um, I figured the ranger was married, so I started shouting for help. And nobody came. I, I seen that there was another house in the distance, so I continued to shout for help. I shout, 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 shout for help. Nobody came. I continued to shout for help. And then, then I hear this voice, this quiet, soft toned voice that said, call 911 from your phone or you're going to die. And to be honest, I kind of blew it off because at this point, my, at, my phone was a, a little Samsung flip phone. And because of this event, I will always buy Samsung phones. Always. Shameless plug for Samsung. But anyway. Um, Keep shouting for help. Keep shouting for help. Keep shouting for help. At one point, I almost pass out because I'm all this time I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding because there's a hole in my head. All of a sudden, I hear this voice again, a little bit more forceful, saying, "Call nine one one. Call nine one one from your phone, or you're, or you're dead." A little bit more forceful, but still. Calm and peaceful, but forceful. So I said, all right. So I pull my phone out of the water, flip it open, dial 911, press send, phone sprang to life, full power, everything. And I doubt uh, it connects to 911. And give a full description of what's going on. And oh, by the way, I'm talking like I'm talking to you right now. Fully coherent, not like I'm losing massive amounts of blood or anything like that. The 911 operator didn't believe me. She thought I was joking. She goes, you better not be joking. Otherwise, you're going to be arrested for, for uh, calling in a false claim or something like that. 
And, um, and I said, no, I can actually feel inside my head right now. If you don't get here soon, you'll be telling my wife and kids why, why you're, you had to fish out a dead body. So anyway, they, she said, all right, calm down. You, you actually got the wrong 911. Let me transfer you to the 911 center uh, in the area that you're located in. So I had to go through this whole, whole ordeal again. But this time it took a little bit quicker. It took probably about 10 minutes before rescuers got there. Anyway, within about 10 minutes, I was able to pull, um, and within about 10 minutes, rescuers got there, got there and pulled me out. And once I got to the 911, um, once I got to the hospital, the local hospital, my boss had had met me there because he was on the local rescue squad of uh, the volunteer rescue squad and as he started filling out the, the the other workman's comp papers and all that and he goes you know you know you should have died today i go yeah blow alone should, the blow alone to the pipe uh pipe should have killed me hypothermia what else should have killed me um he goes, one core body temperature dropped down to 85. Because temperature that day was about 40 degrees and windy. And hello, Nicole. And, um, But he said to me, and this blew my mind at the time. When rescuers got there, live electrical stuff was right at my left shoulder. I, got, I could have shut off the water and everything. But it was coming out with such force, I couldn't see anything. But for lack of a better term, the water level was right around my left nipple. I was about 30 seconds away from being electrocuted with about 50,000 volts. He goes, God was watching over you today. Uh, and I go, yes, sir. Yes, he was. Come to find out that there was a lot of people that day that were praying over me. And fasting over me that day. Um, I got a question for all five people that are here. Now you've heard my story. How long do you think I was out of work? I had a major head trauma. Those of you who've heard this a couple times already, keep quiet. Nope. Sorry, Josh. One week.
one week. One week. What I forgot to say is while I was in the hospital and they were doing all their checks to make sure everything over here was all right, I heard this voice again. He goes, my son, I've extended your time. Through this story, people will reaffirm their faith. People will come to faith in me through your, through your story. God is real. I cannot deny the fact that he is real. I'm very grateful. And today, today is that anniversary of that incident. By this time that day, I was getting ready to be released from the hospital. 12 staples, 10 stitches. So don't feel bad when I don't go up, Josh, on the normal LDS lives, okay? <laughs> Cause I don't like I don't do apologetics whatsoever. I but my faith is there. My faith is it. My, my faith is there. I I uh, if I could sh share a, a, an inkling of all that I've seen, all all, all that I've. All that I've experienced, I would. But as you and I both know, when God shares the stuff with us, we can't always share just yet. So, my challenge to everybody who is here, who has heard this story, take it, share it. Share it with others. God is real, folks. He has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to suffer and die for all of us. We are all God's children. We are all his family. And here, soon, he is going to make everything right. And you can believe my story. You can blow it off. I, I don't care. It's what God has revealed to me. That has set my faith in, in his church. In his restored gospel. In stone. And that has annoyed the adversary to this very day. Because I will not quit. No matter what he throws at me. I thank you. For all who have come here tonight. To listen. I thank you. If you have any more further questions. Again. Um, unfortunately. I cannot. I cannot receive or send, send any messages here on TikTok. Um, there is the, Discord, uh, the LDS Discord server. I do have my own personal server. 
on Discord, link in bio. It is my pleasure, Josh. If you want to continue the conversation, you know where to find me. I'm not hard to find. find. But I have to get going. I got chores to do around the house. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad I was able to share this with you. Because it's very, I, I, I hold this event and this day very sacred and dear and near and dear to my heart. So thank you. Please share this. If the spirit tells you to, prompts you to, and I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Hope you guys have an amazing, wonderful night.